This is 7 in National News and in our top story. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, has issued a human resources law for executive directors of the Dubai government, which is in line with law number two of 2015. The law constitutes an organisational framework to regulate work relations between the executive directors of public agencies and departments with their deputies and assistant director generals. The law includes mechanisms that will help executive directors at the Dubai government departments, as well as lay down the rules of functional categories and financial allocations, as well as mechanisms for evaluating their performance, rehabilitation and development. The law also includes the provisions governing the transfer and secondment of executive directors. There are also a set of general regulatory provisions. The ruler of Dubai also received Wang Yi, who is China's Minister of Foreign Affairs, and his delegation at Zabel Palace on Saturday evening. The visiting Chinese minister conveyed to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed an official invitation from the chairman of China's State Council to visit the country. He accepted the invitation and expressed appreciation of the State Council's generous gesture. During the meeting, Sheikh Mohammed and the Chinese minister explored a number of regional matters and also ways of bolstering the historic friendship and cooperation between the leaderships and peoples of their two friendly countries. Dubai Smart Government's MPay app for mobile payments through smartphones helped collect over 163 million dirhams in 2014, a 418% increase compared to the previous year, and saw a rise of 267% in the number of transactions. Over 163 million dirhams was collected through 326,287 transactions through the MPay app by the end of December 2014. That's compared to just over 31.6 million dirhams through 88,988 transactions in 2013. Meanwhile, more users of smart devices are downloading the app, with the number of customers registered rising from 13,600 by the end of 2013 to around 70,000 by the end of 2014. That's up by 415%, while the app was downloaded around 49,000 times in 2014. Ahmad bin Humaydan, the DSG Director General, said that these results clearly indicate the rising pace of smart transformation and our success in fulfilling the leadership's vision, which is to provide a world-class smart government in Dubai. The public were invited to a seminar by the Road and Transport Authority today to discuss some of the current challenges that the disabled community face and how they can improve their services. Officials from the RTA held an open discussion with the disabled community and parents of the disabled from the Rashid Centre of Disabled Students to talk about some of the challenges they face in day-to-day -day activities. The seminar comes in line with the Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum's vision, which is to make Dubai completely disabled friendly by 2020, under the slogan of My Community, City for Everyone. Some of the issues raised by the community included not enough ramps or access to public transport services, to which officials confirmed that currently nine metro stations have ramps, while 15 are in progress. They also assured that their services, including parking for the disabled, will be a lot better in the future. They also highlighted a smart city app where people can access important information from mobiles. From the system that we have now to the smart smart uh, services, which is, comes through the telephone, and this mission, which comes from His His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, which is uh, the, instructed all the, uh, the the government entities for uh, uh, which is gives special services for all the tourists and the residents uh, at the same time and. Uh, we already have lots of application for the uh, 
for, for, for the smart services. And on the other hand, they will be by end of this year and next year, they will be most of the service, our services for our RTA will be on, uh, on, a, on a smart telephone. Second things we are focusing also when we uh, uh, require for design or build any uh, services which is related to the mode of transportation especially when it comes to the uh, taxis and uh, um, tram and uh, metros and all the buses and marine services for the public transport all will be taken into consideration all the requirement criteria for the special needs on the other hand also the services which is related to the this mode of transport especially when it comes to the uh, uh, logistic services dubai is definitely disabled friendly but we are still on the way to achieve his highness sheikh hamdan's initiative of my community a city for everyone dubai already does have ramps at uh, metro stations this is something done by the rta about uh, nine ramps and 15 more under progress by 2016, Dubai parks will be 100% disabled friendly with places to play, washrooms, etc. Um, RTA in collaboration with Rashid Center for Disabled held a very detailed seminar today with many members of RTA attending, including the head of customer council, Mr. Mohammed Abid Al Mullah. And discussions were thrown back and forth about how RTA would improve their services towards disabled people in Dubai. And RTA did mention their smart city initiative. So we all look forward to making Dubai one of the friendliest cities in the world to disabled people. The number of criminal cases handled by the Abu Dhabi Police General Headquarters dropped by 18% in 2014. That's compared with 2013 figures. While cases of bounced checks handled by the directorate were down by 20% last year. The statistics were published by the Abu Dhabi Police and Brigadier Maktoum al-Sharifi, the director of the Capital Police Directorate, attributed this drop in crime rates to the strict security measures enforced by the police, in addition to the positive effects of continuous awareness drives. Al-Sharifi said that the number of the criminal reports put forward to the various police stations affiliated to the directorate in 2014 were 17,714 as against 21,515 reports the previous year. While the total number of cases related to bounced checks was 12,789 as against 15,927 reports in 2013. And on the capital's roads, the number of traffic accident fatalities declined by 8% from 289 in 2013 to 267 in 2014. And severe injuries decreased by 34% from 366 to 240. The rate of fatalities improved per 100,000 vehicles by 15%. And traffic accidents decreased overall by 10% from 2071 to 1861, despite the number of registered vehicles and drivers increasing by 9% over the period. The Director of Traffic and Patrols Directorate at Abu Dhabi Police, Brigadier Hussein Ahmed Al Harithi, attributed the improvement in safety levels to the directorate's efforts in implementing the long-term strategic plan that includes six key pillars. He also added that statistics show that traffic accidents on the 10 most dangerous roads in Abu Dhabi registered a decrease of 11%. Traffic fatalities on the same roads fell by 23% and severe injuries down by 40%. And finally, looking to other news now, hundreds of passionate falconers have come out to showcase their skills and reconnect with their heritage as they participate in the ongoing FASA Championship for Falconry. More than 150 falcons have been lined up for the third edition of the Fakir al Aijal Falconry Championship, where there are 28 different categories based on the age and breed of the falcon during the 400 meter long race. The points accumulated will be based on their speed and agility, with the winner of each category standing a chance to win a new Range Rover. 
organised by the Hamdan bin Mohammed Heritage Centre. The current contest is a part of the 12th edition of the FASA Championships, which is often classed as the local Olympics, and includes more traditional events such as yola and diving competitions, as well as the saluku races. The organising committee also stated that this year they have attached an electronic chip to the Falcons, which should enable them to monitor their speed and agility more accurately. A large participation of youngsters has also been witnessed during this year's competitions, signifying the increased passion amongst the youth for their cultural history. For the contestants, the competition has become a meeting point for falconers from around the region to share their passion. Although winning has its perks, organisers and contestants view the event as a festival rather than a competition amongst each other. Not all of us carrying a falcon. There's a, some people carrying the falcon. Let us think 10% from the from the uh, people in Emirates, they uh, take care of Falcon. 10% they go for the diving. 10% they go with the camel. 10% they go with... It's a, it's a something uh, percentage, a very nice percentage. So all of these people, they have experience from their fathers and fathers and fathers. So it's like this. They are participate and even now, if you, if, you, if you look at our championship, this championship, you will find from seven or from five years old until 70 years old. So this is a, that's why I told you it's a festival, it's not a championship. This is the, um, uh, uh, the Arabs rifle, how it used to be to get their food. Um, and uh, because of uh, the, the developments that have been uh, over over here in the Gulf, things have been changed. So the falconry, the purpose of the falconry is not there anymore. It's uh, for majorly fun, and some of the guys is trying to keep uh, uh, the, um, the falconry uh, alive, as they say. If you see all of the guys around over here, we haven't seen them. Falconers from, from Fujairah up to uh, uh, Asila. So people we haven't met before, we're starting to have lots of discussions with them, knowing them, you know. We, it's, it's, it's a matter of a gathering over there. It's, it's, the falconry uh, people are becoming as a one family because of those competitions.